You're watching the Small Business Showcase, brought to you by Sassfin and Suits and Sneakers. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark Sham. I'm the founder and CEO of Suits and Sneakers. The Small Business Showcase is exactly that. It is our attempt to shine a massive spotlight on small businesses around the country who are just doing the most incredible things. As we all know, small businesses are the engine room of our economy and we have to do everything we can to support and love these guys and girls. So today's episode features Mad Giant. I am not only a massive fan of theirs, but have been a customer of theirs for quite some time because they've just been so impressive in their attack on the craft brewery space. But more importantly, I wanted to use today to shine a spotlight on what it took to have to endure three separate alcohol bans when you sell alcohol. These guys are just so impressive and I hope you enjoy what they're all about. So I was very fortunate to study at Stellenbosch University, did my chemical engineering degree, and as a final year, you have to do a little project. So back then, breweries came to the universities and said, we want students to get to know brewing science because South Africa is one of the few countries in the world where we don't have brewing science as an actual course at university level. Um, I like building stuff. I didn't really drink a lot of beer, but I like building stuff. So I was like, cool, brewery, might make some extra mates. Like, this would be cool. Um, research, start to brew beer. Like, I had to buy books online. It was a bit of a hack. And then, while researching, traveling to see little breweries and big breweries and speaking to people and the science behind making beer, like everything just completely, you know, it got me. And, uh, and then obviously the, con the consumption part and having mates around the bride, I, I mean, it just all comes together. But there is a long way and a big gap between you brewing a little bit of beer at home and now becoming a, a decent sized brewery certainly in the physical size of your brewery, and actually the business of beer. So how are things going today? Just give me a snapshot of Mad Giant for people who have no clue who you are. First of all, we're situated in downtown Joburg, number one Fox Street. It's like the oldest part of town. And we have this old warehouse that we converted to have a brewery and a restaurant. Okay, so we started brewing there in 2016, um, August. And it was great. I mean, we, we won many awards. The restaurant was doing well, won best beer in Africa, etc. Wow. Um, now, what is it today? Is, well, we're almost five years later. And I think the last year was probably the most interesting <laughs> <laughs> of the five. Um, but yeah, that's where we're based. And um, we essentially wanted to be a Joburg brewery where people can come and visit us, see what it's about, and like at least what does it look like inside a brewery. And so it's completely open plan and, and visible. At the moment, though, we don't have, um, we don't uh, allow visitors in yet um, because the restaurant's not operational, um, not at the brewery. So yeah. And then you've kind of transitioned. So you've got the brewery, and you've transitioned into creating these tap rooms. You want to just share a little bit more about it? Yeah. So. Just before COVID hit last year, we decided we need to change our strategy a little bit. We, we had the brewery, we were, we were distributing through the normal channels of going to restaurants and going to bottle stores. We wanted to expand our, our reach and, and sign up with a national distributor. But we also knew the value of really having connection and interaction with our guests and let them come to us. And there was just a stint down in town where the M1, M2 highway was under construction for almost a year. And then we had xenophobic attacks and all of this stuff deterred people from really coming to town. And town has lost a bit of that initial interest when Mabuneng started and Fox Junction started and the Fox Market and we got there. So we thought, well, why don't we just take the beer to the people, literally, and uh, came up with this idea and it's almost what the British brewers do to a certain extent, the American brewers, and have a little tap room. So we found a, a spot close to my house conveniently um, at the bottom of Conrad Drive and the developers were going to, it's an old building, it's almost been an institution and they're going to just like revamp it, give it a facelift which it really needed. Um, and there's a lot of traffic going past so for me it was almost a no-brainer to say why don't we open something that could be like a community get together space, you know, like not a dingy pub, but something that could yes. be vibey, new, clean, good food, good drink. Um, and yeah, it's one of the projects I love the most of what we've done today. 
So Ireland ended up starting the Small Business Showcase about a year ago because when COVID hit, it impacted many businesses, including my own. We weren't able to host the events that we were doing yeah. as a public speaker. I lost the ability to speak in front of an audience. We set up the studio. And one day I thought, you know, why, why don't I invite a few other small businesses that have also got hit quite hard and maybe just shine a spotlight on them because I have the resources. And here we are today. But COVID equally impacted you guys because you're in the business of alcohol sales. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, what did we have? Three bands? Yeah, three. So this must have impacted you in the craziest ways. Do you want to just share a little bit about what the last year has been like? I mean, it's pretty much a year ago. I think next week it will be a year ago where we heard that the first uh, flights into South Africa was going to stop. I think that's how it started. There was like no tourism. And also we had at the... Back then at the brewery, we had contracts with big tour operators, operators like Tourvest, etc. They would bring um, tourists over to us and book like lunch there, etc. And they just called up and said, this is like it, stopping. Yeah. And that was a week before uh, the president spoke and said, he's, we're going to shut down. And we just immediately knew when we're losing that revenue stream of tourism that it would, it, we won't be able to survive. So we immediately went into discussions with um, all our staff and say, look, how are we gonna, how are we gonna, what are we gonna do? And at, at, then everybody thought three months, like everybody thought this thing's gonna be three months. <laughs> so that was on the one end. So we immediately went on to unpaid leave for those who were keen and, and said, look, we'll, we don't wanna lose our jobs. We don't wanna be retrenched. We don't wanna take packages. Like, you know, what will we do? So luckily we were very fortunate. We had a very good team um, and we could really work together with everyone. And then on the beer side, it was like, I mean, what, we just had no plan. Like, you, it, it was just like, what do you do? Like, is this a month? plan was limited. And what yeah, could yeah. you do? And, and at that stage, we were quite, what was so surreal was that February, February last year was the first year that both my businesses actually made a profit. <laughs> like all this hard grind, get to this point, profit, boom, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting there, I was like, cool, managing the cash flow. We can talk to, you know, landlords, etc. We probably had like a month of cash flow. Wow. That I was like, cool, I think we can survive a month. And then and we just had no other plan. I was like, what else could you do? And then I think sometimes you just get a bit lucky. And because of my chemical engineering background, and I used to work for Sassel and et cetera, so a couple of people start calling us and they're like, we, we're going to need ethanol. We're going to need ethanol for sanitizer. And me and the, and the brewers, we all got together because I did my PhD in distillation. So I was like, okay, how do we rig like a basic column very quickly? And it's just impossible. Like you just can't. Like in a week, we had a week. Okay, when Siddle, Siddle gave us a week. And I said to the Oaks, this is not going to work. We're not going to physically be able to make the alcohol. Can't we buy it? And then we started like people calling Ilovo and, uh, and Sassel and like all the distillers that make ethanol throughout South Africa. And eventually I said to the Oaks, look, we can make you the sanitizer. Like we can convert our brewery to create, to, build, to manufacture sanitizer. We can partner with the labs. They can test everything. We can have the QMS systems up. We can do everything, okay? So you must wow. just get the raw materials. Organize the trucks to bring everything here and we will make it. And Oaks hustled, eh? Like phones, opening accounts, calling. It, it was wow. incredible what came out of the woodwork. It's just wow. insane. Within a week, I remember, like the day before, we still had stuff coming overnight, the most important pump from PE had to come up and uh, for us to be able to pump this ethanol because you have special materials, special flow meters, it's flammable. Luckily in my PhD, I worked with flammable liquids and at Sassel, so you understand how to convert and run the risk. I had to get the insurance on board and say, look, we now actually essentially have a ticking time bomb here. <laughs> it's like, it, it can go up in flames at any time, but we'll do this and this, and we just had like a whole risk mitigation thing going on. Wow. And, and then we started making sanitizer. Like the day before the pumps arrived, I had to like rush to, because the courier wouldn't make it to us in time. So I had to go to the depot, go find my pump. Nice. <laughs> and, we, and we switched it on and we started making sanitizer. And then that kept us, I mean, the first month we, we were really busy and that helped us a lot. Uh, we, we could produce quite a lot of sanitizer and, up, and the guys that partnered with us and, and, and that worked with us were absolutely phenomenal. And they just managed it. They managed just the, the logistics and all. We could just like make sure we get everything and make. And that's wow. all we could. And so with a small team, we were How long did you do this for? Well, we're still doing it to a very limited extent now. Um, 
But that was very busy for about two months. There was this massive wave in the beginning of everybody so just needed sanitizer. So we were very, yeah, timing was, was perfect. And then we diversified into buying packaging lines so that we can actually pack it into smaller containers. Because in the beginning, we literally just made it into big bins, yes. um, big flow bins. And we realized people were buying it, but they needed it in a spray bottle and that. So okay. we ordered like some little packaging lines so we could help pack. Yes. And, and get that out. So also to try and extend our revenue because we weren't, we, we didn't know when alcohol would, or beer would be allowed to be sold again. Yes. And then you've, of course, then it's like, okay, we open, we close, we open, <laughs> we closed. And you've had to yeah. like deal with that. Yeah. For so, a year. so there was, a, when was it about July when they said, cool, we're going to level two or three where we could start trading again. So then, okay, we started to wind down the sanitizer, but the sanitizer sales was quite low at that stage. Um, and I said to the guys, cool, well, let's get back to brewing. <laughs> and it was so weird because we were like, I had to like start up everything. And, we, and I just realized like how long it takes to start up again. Because you can't, you, you, you basically rely on yeast. And that has to grow. And it just doesn't just go from, because we buy them in liquid form in like really small capsules. And that has to be grown up. Wow. And then so you brew a small batch and then a bigger batch and then a bigger batch. And every one takes like two weeks. So you end up just winding up to get to capacity. So it takes about two months plus to get a brewery up to capacity. My goodness. And then just as we had, we were starting to get out, we had, yeah. in that period, we sold out the little bit of beer we had left, like what, that we still had at the brewery that we could sell. Um, we, we, that was sold out. So we're just trying to crank up production to just get the orders out and make revenue. And then another ban. And <laughs> that, this, is, this is insane. It's insane. <laughs> Yeah, so... Um, but yeah, you are. Yeah. And I think it brings me to a big part of why I personally asked you to be here. You were nominated um, from the outside because I think you have quite a phenomenal fan base. But, you know, I am first a, a customer and a fan of your guys. And I've been lucky enough to see the behind-the-scenes view of every little box that you check behind the scenes. I've seen the effort that you put in and I think the story that you've just told illustrates so perfectly what most small businesses go through but that's i think on another level but then also you know there's so many things besides the fact that I, I, everything you guys have done from the beginning for me has just been so world class you've just done it to the best of your ability and the proof of the pudding is when i drink the beer i enjoy it up there with the best but outside of that when i go to your facilities it was world class. When I go to your tap room the other day, it's world class. Everything about what you do is epic. And then to add something that just so resonates with me is I can't remember exactly when you started doing it, but you got to a place where you decided no more plastic. Oh, yeah. And I just, I think it's easy to talk about that. Like no plastic is an easy thing to say, but maybe you could just run us through the journey that you've been on to eradicate plastic and you can talk about extra fresh because I just, I think that everything you do is world class, please share it with me. I, well, too, thanks so much for the acknowledgement and the, and the compliments, Mark. I really and sorry, one last thing. On top of all of this is you're still a tiny business. Yeah, yeah. It, it can look like you, like I think what you guys have got going for you is on the outside, it looks like you're huge. But I have a bit of the behind the scenes views that you are still a small business. Yeah, absolutely. You are dealing with all the pressures um, that come with a small business. So, sorry for interrupting you, but I just think it's worth noting. I think the biggest motivation for me to be an entrepreneur and doing what I do is to say that if ever this fails, I don't want it to be because we didn't try everything. Okay, so that's, I guess, why there's this drive to see how good and how well we can do it. And then I just, I'm a mountain biker, I love nature. Um, I'm a bit, I think, idealistic. So the plastic thing came about when there was just in, in the news, and I think David Attenborough made that beautiful BBC documentary about just how we are stuffing up, stuffing up the planet with waste um, and plastic. And, and I just looked at our stuff, and number one, it just, it looks terrible. For me, anything in plastic looks terrible. So I looked at our packaging and I was just like, this is just, this is bad. How do we change it? And then. We're just like, cool, why don't we just go for this massive anti-plastic drive? And is it possible? The first thing is that it's massively expensive to move away from plastic. Plastic is so cheap, it's so versatile, it's really easy to apply and use. And if it doesn't work, you throw it away, nobody cares. Um, so it was a big move in 2018 when we decided to go 
plast anti-plastic. We rebranded, we went into cardboard little boxes, uh, carry packs, we went into closed boxes, we stapled them closed. Like everything was about how low can we go with plastic. And we pretty much eradicated it. I think the biggest challenge is where you, who you buy from. Um, stuff still comes in plastic, but at least what we put out of the brewery, that was our big drive. And then we got a lot of love for that. A lot of people bought into that and said, well done, and we could see the support and we could see how it grew. The packs looked better, everything. And then, so when, sort of when COVID hit and we had a little bit of time to rethink about our business, which I think everybody had, is that how could we be relevant in the long run as a small brewery? And I just looked at all the numbers, how much we pay for, say, glass and labels and packaging. So when you look at us, even as a small brewery compared to AB InBev and the bigger brewers, the liquid cost is not that much different. There is, they can brew a lot cheaper than we can because of scale. But where we really start to lose is on the packaging side. We just can't beat it. We like pay like three rand a bottle and they can pay cents for stuff. You know, it's like incredible. And, and how do we stay relevant? And then I started to think about what was my original dream? My original dream was to brew beer for the people around us in Joburg, um, have the best tasting beer, not having it sit on a shelf or outside in the sun. And who knows what's happened to it by the time it gets to you. So wasn't there a way to shortcut this? And the, the idea sat with, we had this cold room full of kegs uh, when we eat lockdown. And I mean, even if you wanted to bootleg, how the hell do you bootleg a keg? Because nobody's got a tap at home, okay? So you can't do that. And we thought, cool, we're gonna, the Americans got this thing they call a growler. It's like a two liter jug thing, okay? Yes. It's like a big uh, glass container. And typically you'd fill it from a tap and then people can take, take it home. So we thought we're gonna get that going but that's not ideal way to treat beer. So we just, it just kept spinning, spinning, and then we eventually like, is it possible to do like the milkman of beer? Where we just go, crate to your house, because at our house, we were starting to order food boxes and milk, and everything was coming from people in the neighborhood that started businesses and everything during lockdown. And I was like, it, it is happening. Like, people are at home, they're receiving stuff. Why not, why can't we do it? So. Search started working on this project. We actually turned it around fairly quickly, and we came up with the milkman of beer with no plastic, no label waste. Literally, the crown cap is all that goes to waste. Okay? And on top of that, and I think the beauty is that it comes straight from us out of the brewery to you at your house. Like, that beer is never old. It's never close to expiry. It's never been in the sun. It's always been cold. Um, and it's fresh, it really is super fresh. And we came up with the name Extra Fresh, so <laughs> Extra Fresh Beer. And so that has been insane how well that has been received. And yeah. we just said, we're not gonna go to Cape Town, we're just gonna go to the people around us here in the parks, and we, we don't care, and uh, we just gotta make, take care of it and make sure the service is good, so. I love it so much, and it, it happened a few weeks ago where um, as soon as the last ban was lifted, I gave you a shot, I just moved into a new place, and I was like, can I get some beer from you? Because I've been drinking commercial beer for a while, and it's not necessarily my favorite. And now that I could order from you legally, I was quite excited. And then you told me about the extra fresh idea. And that's exactly what happened. I had these two crates delivered, one with IPA beer and one with lager. I had a whole bunch of friends over the next day. Um, and we all drank it. We kept we keep the bottles. You put it back yeah. in the crate. And Thanks. I've got like a few beers left, I think like four or five. And when I'm done, I'm basically going to call you. Yeah. You're going to come fetch that that crate, um, or the two crates, and you're going to kind of replenish. Yeah, so I give you fresh beer, you give me the crates back. And I, to your point, all the bottles come back to you, etc. I just think it's so epic. And I think that everything that you've done has been so on point. It's so the epitome of what small businesses do to an economy. They create innovation, they turn quickly, they their money is constantly moving because you're not sitting with billions in the bank. And so small businesses in this way are so good for the economy because everything they get in, they're going yeah. out. You know, change agency happens within small businesses. And I, I, as a small business myself, I just know how hard it is for people who don't understand all the behind the scenes views of what's going on. So people might look at your brewery or they might look at this tap room that you have and be like, oh, it's actually quite a big business, but it's not true. Like the things that you're going through, I think today you've just highlighted such a small portion and 
probably the best part for me is everything you do, you just do so well. So really, I can't say well done enough to you for the way you've pivoted, adjusted, what have you, and also the way you've just continuously lifted the standard. That over there is your um, close-up camera, and I wanna give you the closing or parting thought to the audience and the people that are watching this. You can share anything, and lastly, just add how people get hold of you, or what is your call to action to people? If you're in Joburg and you love beer, order extra fresh, and you could just go to madgiant.ca.za. There's an extra fresh tab, sign up and we'll deliver. I just wanna take this opportunity to give a big love to Sasfin for helping us put the Small Business Showcase together. Literally, without them, none of this would be possible. So here's what I'd like from you. Number one, please support these small businesses. A really easy way to do this is just to like and share this video so that more people can see this. And if you have a small business that you'd like to nominate because you've dealt with them and you love it, please let us know, get in touch, chat to you soon.